In the Power Platform, Power Apps, and Power Automate, the way that our apps and workflows can communicate externally with other services is through connectors. You can think of a connector as a proxy or a wrapper around another web API system. Before I dive deeper into that, let's take a step back and ask, what is an API? API stands for Application Programming Interface. Generally speaking, an API is a software intermediary that allows your program to interface with that service. There are multiple types of APIs, but the APIs that we're talking about in the context of the Power Platform are web-based APIs. So how would you talk with a web API? A web API can be talked to using HTTP requests. This is similar to how you would send a request and expect a web page response from Facebook when you go to facebook.com in your web browser. HTTP, or Hypertext Transfer Protocol, is a globally adopted protocol for data transfer over the web. Every HTTP request has four primary components. Method. This tells the API what you are trying to do. For example, if you're trying to request data, it would be get. If you're trying to send data, it would be post. There are many more method types, but this is enough to get an idea for now. URL, the website or web service endpoint where the API lives and where you are directing your request to. Headers, snippets of information that add context to your request, like who you are, what type of data you are sending, what type of data you are expecting to receive back, and more. And body. If you are sending data to the API, this is where you would include the content that you are sending. This can be binary content like in a file or data in a common format like JSON. You can probably already see that talking with APIs can at times be a cumbersome task. For example, to connect with a Twitter API, you'd have to know the specific format that the Twitter API expects. What method to use, what URL to send to the request to, any headers that need to be included, authorization, how the body content should be formatted, there is a lot to think about. This is a task probably best left to the professional developer. However, Microsoft still wants you as a business developer to have the tools at your disposal to use other services through APIs in your apps and workflows. To allow for you to do this in an easy way, Microsoft abstracts the HTTP request process away from you with connectors. Connectors make communication with an API service easy. They handle all of the tedious things involved in HTTP request and only present to you the things that you want to control. Let's go back to the example of the Twitter API. Let's say I wanted to post a new tweet from a Power App. I would use the post a tweet action from the out of the box Twitter connector. This action would only ask me what I want to tweet. The connector will take care of the rest of the HTTP request, meaning that the method, URL, headers, structure, this will be taken care of for me by the connector. It would then send the request to Twitter on my behalf. By using the Twitter connector, I don't have to worry about the complex process of making my own HTTP request. Instead, I focus on what's important to me and spend the time I've saved on app development. Connectors have been a very successful feature in Microsoft's low-code, no-code development platform, the Power Platform. The number of connectors available for use in the platform has grown from about 200 in 2019 to over 700 in 2022. The out-of-the-box connectors available in the Power Platform got there in one of two ways. The first way is Microsoft themselves made the connector. This is most common with Microsoft's first-party apps like Teams, Office, and various Azure services. The other way is the third-party company that owns that service made the connector themselves and certified it for public use with Microsoft. For example, DocuSign wanted their API to be consumable through the Power Platform. So they made their own connector for handling communication between Power Apps and the DocuSign API. They, like all others, followed a rigorous certification process to have their connector made available as a connector in the Power Platform. So now I hope you see the purpose and benefit of using connectors in the Power Platform. There's a lot more to talk about when it comes to connectors, but I hope this helped get you started. 
Stay tuned for a future video I will make covering connector actions via a webhook architecture and how you too can design your own custom connector from within the Power Platform.